2013 was an extraordinary year, as you know. There were several events during the year which I think um, really propelled stocks. The most prominent of which was a, I think, a normalization or a um, stabilization in the financial system, both here in the U.S. and globally. And what that led to was a greater source of confidence about the future. And therefore, multiples started to expand as confidence increased, earnings growth was good. Um, six, seven, eight percent for the year. The bulk of that actually, or not the bulk, but a large part of that came from share repurchase um, and lower tax rates, which helped overall earnings. Um, but earnings were solid. Uh, the world financial system has started to, to stabilize, and the result, investors felt better about the future. And I'd say multiples now are at a point where they're normal. They've, they've returned back to um, a normal range relative to uh, the crisis. Uh, the best areas of the market were generally those where, um, quite surprisingly, were driven by the consumer. So consumer discretionary was quite strong. Um, industrial, which is not consumer, which is more uh, business oriented, business spending oriented, um, also did well. Certain areas of healthcare, biotech was, was an excellent place to be. 2014. I think it's fair to say, um, to have expectations that are lower than, the, than we had in 2013. Uh, when we look back at 2013, one of the things that didn't happen was you didn't have a lot of volatility in the market. Uh, you're, you had two basically 5% corrections, you never had a 10% correction. As you look forward, um, it would be normal to get a little bit more volatility in the market. We've had a good run up, stocks need to grow or digest some of the gains that we've had. The biggest issue during the year is going to be uh, the progression of interest rates and how they rise. Clearly, they're going to rise as we go out from, as we go through the year. The tapering process has, or the end of QE and the beginning of tapering has started. That will happen during uh, the course of 2014, and the market's reaction to that and that transition is probably the biggest factor that's going to uh, affect stocks as we go out through the year. I, I expect it to be a normal um, kind of. Um, digestion of higher interest rates, and one should expect higher interest rates um, as we go through the year, as inflation subdued. Labor growth is positive, but income growth is, is rather slow. Without significant increases in the cost of labor, inflation is expected to remain low. So I expect a good year, a positive year, much more modest returns that we've seen, a little bit more volatility, perhaps a little bit more um, influence from macro-related events. Um, one of the things that helped last year was that there are a bunch of potential negatives, government, regulation, Middle East, Middle East uh, Iran, um, Europe, they all had the potential to be negatives and all of them actually wound up being uh, fairly benign in terms of their impact on the market. Uh, this year you have probably have a little bit more uh, maybe a little higher probability of having some macro-related events uh, impact the markets. So, uh, so uh, we have positive expectations for next year. Uh, one of the things you'll see in 2014 is that you're going to see a transition from the consumer, hopefully, over to really business-driven um, investing. And the one thing that's been lacking throughout this whole recovery has really been a strong rebound in capital expenditure, capex spending. Uh, by businesses. And I think you're going to start to see that pick up in 2014. And if that happens, in fact, profits could surprise on the upside. Because you're starting to see loan growth, which is one of the leading indicators of uh, future capital, capital expenditures, capital spending, uh, start to pick up for businesses. Consumer spending will still be all right, but it won't have to carry the weight of the economy on its back the same way it has the last several years. Uh, and, and, and that, put, that creates the possibility, I think, for some upside uh, upside in terms of profits for a lot of companies. And so in terms of the portfolio and stock picking, we're thinking about that. We're looking for companies where we think, business-oriented companies, where we think their cash flow is understated and with a pickup in, in CapEx spending, you'll see that pull through the, uh, the P&L and you'll get, the, you'll get the rewards on the other side. One thing that really um, has become a significant driver of excess returns 
is the whole idea of capital efficiency and capital return. And, and when I say capital efficiency, I'm not talking about dividends and buybacks, which were major drivers of stocks over the last several years. I'm talking about capital efficiency. And what I mean by that is companies that have assets that are undervalued and that are kind of trapped uh, in their portfolio of companies. And so you saw a lot of spinoffs, you saw a lot of mergers, you saw a lot of divestments, companies creating other ways to supplement value, to create value uh, and supplement growth. Uh, the other areas of capital, which is capital management, which is dividends and, and, um, and share repurchases, were also very strong. I think dividend increases will continue to be strong, um, but you're going to get a lot more of that money being invested ex either internally into the business or externally through M&A into other business to grow the, the core business. So you're just starting to see that.